coming up on the sports desk, the LA Rams. Oh man, so close. We may not have won the Super Bowl, but they are certainly winners in our book. We've got the inside scoop on the Rams from a sports desk insider, AKA a former SD host on what the mood was like going into the big day. Bishop Montgomery is Bishop Montgomery. I mean, those nights know how to seal the deal in all sports. And yes, our playoffs have arrived. We've got the who, what, where, when, and how. Let's get things started right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Sports Desk, your one source for all things Torrent Sports. I am your host, Leslie Robbins. For the next half hour or so, sit back and kick back as we give you a gateway to the brightest sports stars and hottest sports spots in Torrance. Before we get to the good stuff, we want to hear from you. Here are the social media stats. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. Find us, tag us, follow me, follow the show. Our program is also on Facebook. We've got email. All the details are right there on the screen. Tell us what's going on and what we need to know because when it comes down to it, this show is all about you. Now, let's get you in the know with some numbers. And the numbers everyone is talking about, that was the lowest scoring Super Bowl in history. Sadly, our LA Rams came this close to bringing home the Lombardi Trophy, but alas, the LA Rams did lose to Tom Brady and the New England Patriots 13 to three in what was, in my opinion, a relatively drama-free game that was really all about defense. And we here in Torrance have an insider's look into the Rams world. A former sports desk anchor, Byron Newsom, is the LA Rams Fan Fest host for all the home games. We got him on camera less than 24 hours after the big game to talk about it all. That's right, Leslie, the LA Rams, the NFC champions made it to Super Bowl 53, but the outcome was not what we wanted. They lost to the New England Patriots 13 to three. Well, the fan support is still there though. Yes, they have been there since this team moved back to LA. All the fans came out. My wife and I actually went to the first exhibition game in 2016, the first game back here in L.A., and the fans were bringing their grandpa's old jackets and T-shirts out, and they were really excited for this team to be back. They thought St. Louis just held them for a little while. This is our team, and there was no warming up here. You know, sometimes when teams come back into a city, they have to kind of warm up to them. No, the Rams were their team, and they were happy to have them back. And the first year, if you remember, they actually didn't win. They were 4-12 and 12 that first season. So having two winning seasons, Sean McVay came in, the team turned around, the quarterback play, running back play, the defense, everything was right where it needed to be, and this team got to the Super Bowl, but they didn't win it. That's okay, though. The fans love them. I'm telling you, it's been unbelievable. I actually hosted the Fan Fest this year, and I met fans that have been, they said fans for 60-plus years or however long, just as long since the team came. So when they left, they still were fans. They didn't have a team to support here in L.A., but they still supported them. So the fan support has always been there. Now, one of the things that I get to do is not only interact with the fans, but I get to talk to a lot of ex-players, Vince Ferragamo, Orlando Pace, Torrey Holt, some of the ex-players who actually played in Super Bowl on Super Bowl teams for the Rams in previous years. Orlando Pace and Torrey Holt actually were with the greatest show on turf, the St. Louis team that won the championship back in, what is it, 2000? And I tell you what, this team was the team they thought would do it again. They really did. They thought this team had all of the pieces to put it together and actually win the Super Bowl championship this year. But, you know, it got to the game and things did not work out as planned. Now, I did talk to these guys, and they said this team had everything just like their teams did. They had the good offense, they had the passing game, they had the running game, and the defense, and they thought if they just played their game, they will be able to beat anybody. But New England, Tom Brady, I mean, <laughs> we already know that's one of the best teams we've seen this generation, and we couldn't pull a, pull a win out against that team. 13-3. to three. I mean, how can one of the top-scoring teams in the NFL get only three points? That's something they're going to have to look at, and I really want to say myself, Todd Gurley. 
They did not give the ball to Todd Gurley the way I think they should have. He should have been running. And so I, there has to be some kind of injury or something. Nobody's saying anything, but they, there has to be an injury or something that kept him from running the ball and them giving him the ball the way it should have been done. I don't know if you saw at the end of the game when New England had a couple of 26-yard rushing attempts at the end of the game to kind of close the game out. That's what they should have done with them. They should have pounded the ball and given it to Gurley, and then maybe at the end of the game, hey, he would have busted one or would have had an open-up pass. But, hey, the Rams didn't do it. New England did. Congratulations, New England. But the Rams will be back. Thanks, Byron. And can you guess how many former CIF Southern Section athletes have participated in the Super Bowl since the beginning? Well, our friends at the governing body provided us with the answer. 160. That is about three guys each year. And speaking of the CIF Southern Section, from all the Super Bowl action in Atlanta to here in Torrance Cali, the organization has just released their open division playoffs list. And in basketball, Bishop Montgomery is front and center, the girls and the boys. The Lady Knights are the fourth seed in Pool A, while the boys are the eighth seed among eight teams and will be on the road for each of the three rounds of pool play. Now, let's break all of that down. This season, the open division will be pool play, two pools of four. Pool A will consist of the number one seed who will host in each game they're alive for, along with numbers four, five, and eight. Pool B will consist of numbers two, three, six, and seven. Open division finals will be February 23rd at Cal Baptist University. Each participant is guaranteed an automatic berth into the CIF State Regional Playoffs. The CIF State Championships are the weekend of March 8th through 9th in Sacramento. Most of our Torrance basketball teams, boys and girls, have a playoff game this week. Visit our Sports Desk social media pages for the latest schedules, scores, and updates. We'll have results and interviews next week. Well, mere days before all of this excitement, Bishop Montgomery was making headlines. Here's what both the boys and the girls accomplished right before making the playoffs. May I present first our Bishop boys basketball team, Danny Miskell and Cedric Walton. Take it away. Thanks, Leslie. Danny and I are here at the Lady Knights basketball game, but first we got to catch up with the men who played last night right here on this home floor, defeating St. Anthony by a final score of 59 to 50, moving to 9-0 in league play and 22-4 in the season. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at those highlights. The boys held their senior night versus St. Anthony, and senior guard Gianni Hunt jump-started his squad with a three ball to take an early 3-2 lead. Jordan Archie intercepts a bad pass and finds Hunt in the corner. Hunt evades a defender and buries another triple to extend the lead in the second. The threes were falling from all over tonight as Josh Vasquez joined the party. The Knights will take a 29-24 lead into halftime. Third quarter now, Saints doubling Nick Schrader who finds a cutting Vasquez for an easy bucket. Aaron pass for the Saints that finds Isaiah Johnson who flies this one up court for a spectacular finish at the rim. Despite a late surge from the Saints, the Knights were able to hold on for a victory of 59 to 50. And we caught up with head coach Doug Mitchell, Josh Vasquez, and Gianni Hunt following the game. Well, senior night's always special. You want to go out, and we were playing a really good team tonight, so we knew we had a great effort. I was just proud of our seniors coming through for us and getting the win on senior night. I know this was the second time you guys played them all season. What kind of team were they to play again last night? Um, they're a team that's going to play hard. They're going to compete on both ends of the court. They're going to play really hard defense and their well-coached team. So we knew we had to come out and play our best if we want to win this game. Did you definitely feel like they were putting the pressure on you guys last night in last night's game? Um, yeah, they were definitely putting the, the pressure on us because we beat them once at home, and we knew that they're a team that's going to come back and keep fighting, and they never let up, and we had to stay on the gas the whole game. Yeah, you, you guys definitely gassed them. It was a nine-point game, and uh, you had commented that there was a point in the second half where you guys definitely built on that momentum. He handed it off to you, and you hit a three. Can you go ahead and take us back to that play? Uh, we had got the ball out in transition, and him being a great point guard that he is, he seen me in, seen me in the corner, so he kind of brought the ball to my side and gave me a little dribble handoff, and I put up the shot, and it went in, and that gave us a good momentum. Right on. Well, congrats on the W from last night. So what does it mean for your guys' team uh, from here on out? Uh, it gives us momentum going into the playoffs. It's something that we need. Having four losses in the beginning of the season, it kind of put us at a lower seed in the open division that we would want, but with this win, it was big, and it's giving us good momentum. 
Well, you guys are two very dynamic players. We look forward to watching you guys in the playoffs. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, the Lady Knights play just as hard as the boys, and it shows. Results do not lie. Here's more with Danny and Cedric. Leslie, tonight is a big night here at Bishop Montgomery. I mean, it's not only senior night, as you can see behind us, everyone's taking pictures with their families and celebrating, but we also just witnessed the Battle of the Bishops. And of course, the Lady Knights held it down here on home court. Why don't you tell them about it, C? Oh man, they made it look too easy. They led from beginning to end and never looked back. They got big contributions across the board, but the most important contribution came from sophomore forward Kylie Pepe, who had a monster game. The Knights won this game by 36 points total. Let's take a look at the highlights and see how they shine. Knights defense suffocated the Lancers from the beginning. Cyan Dyke jumps on the loose ball and finds Nicole Hayasi, who finishes off with this tough layup to extend the Knights' lead to seven. Kylie Pepe strips the ball, records one of her six steals, finds Kayla Padilla for the easy lay-in. Nine seconds left, Knights trying to extend their lead before the half. Dyke misses the attempt, but Amat looks up court and Hayasi intercepts the pass and finds Padilla for a bucket at the buzzer. Knights lead 35-19 at the half. Third quarter action now. Amat steals the ball from Padilla. Pepe steals the ball from Amat and finds Padilla for an easy layup. Kayla Williams slices through Amat's defense and finds Padilla on the other side for this layup. Lancers missed the three ball. Williams off the bounce and goes coast to coast and lays this one in with some sauce. Knights keep rolling with a final of 77 to 41 and we caught up with the team post game. Kayla, amazing game tonight. What was it like to play Bishop and Mott? I know it wasn't your first time, but coming into it knowing that you're going to be going to the playoffs, what was the t team thinking and what was your mentality about this game? Um, our mentality was come out first five push get a lead so we can get everybody playing we knew it was senior night but we still wanted to include the whole team yeah let everybody get a chance to play and you guys got a lot of momentum going on in the first half alone I mean you guys were already up by almost 17 20 points uh, at what point in the game did you really feel that you and the girls really hit that momentum definitely from the beginning like you said we came out we were ready we had ball movement like crazy so we just knew that Making the extra pass, we were just finding the extra one, and then we knew that the lead was just going to keep rising if we kept that going. I'm here with head coach of the Bishop Montgomery Lady Knights, Noel Quinn, coming off a 36-point victory at home against Bishop Mott. Can you just talk about your girls' tenacity from the opening whistle? I think senior night prompted that. I think that we wanted to play well for our seniors and obviously for the great crowd that we had. Um, our focus this year has been defense, and I think uh, that's where we started today, just getting steals, deflections, and easy buckets. Okay. You talked about defense. I noticed that one of the main things I saw in the first quarter was you, was you employed the full court press early mm -hmm. and then throughout the game. Is that a strategy that you'll use going forward in the postseason as well? Yeah, I think um, without giving you too much uh, <laughs> strategy, I think that's something that we need to work on um, is just speeding teams up. Um, using our athleticism in the backcourt, um, getting easy buckets, um, easy, you know, steals, deflections, like I said. Um, we will use that moving forward, but as you move along towards the end of, you know, league and um, into playoffs, teams scout you. And so they know where our flaws are and weaknesses are in our press and our defenses. So we'll tighten things up, but we use it today to kind of practice um, for the future. Then a few days later, the Lady Knights clinched the Delray League title outright in their regular season finale, winning their game against Sarah 69 to 60. Torrens High lost a pivotal game to Inglewood 76 to 58, thus making the Sentinels the Pioneer League champs. The sports desk was also courtside for senior night at West as the girls and boys basketball teams hosted South and both beat South. For the girls, it was 37 34, and for the boys, it was 61 to 41. The boys at West finished the regular season 19 and 9, 7 and 3 in league play, a second place finish in the Pioneer League. Some takeaways from the Warriors boys game as seen on social. Captain Alex Misha tore his ACL last month versus Cleveland and hadn't played since until this night when he did this. Watch it. One, two, three. Here we go. He's going to shoot. Bam. And then we had junior Casey Umamoto. He landed this beauty on his birthday, no less. He has an incredible story. He suffered a torn ACL in summer league, had surgery, battled back, and didn't miss a single practice. 
Then a few days later, we were there as the Lady Warriors basketball team also won 55-44 against Torrance High, which made 24 straight Pioneer League wins for that team. We're undefeated. Woo! <laughs> West came out swinging in the first half and then really sealed the deal in the third. This plus their last game were some tough wins, but on this final game, the Lady Warriors finished 10 and 0 in league play. 10 and 0. Felt like they came out ready to go. They were engaged and they were fired up. Um, and then throughout the game, we just our key players hit some good, really big shots for us. So I thought that helped us. It's definitely the locker room was very up tempo, upbeat, high energy. Um, I would say, um, and when we set our goals in the beginning of season, that was the top of their list, which was to be undefeated in the league and to be able to to set a goal and to actually go out and achieve it. Um, I, I'm super proud of our kids and I'm happy for them. This year was supposed to be our quote unquote down year. We lost a lot of big names last year, um, but we told them one through 12, that's their strength. And definitely I felt like throughout the season, especially tonight, um, I felt like um, a lot of the players that sometimes don't get a lot of minutes or whatever kind of stepped up big for us tonight. And that's why we were successful this season. I'm just super proud for our kids. Um, and today of, um, I felt like Torrance came out and, and battled with us and you know I give a lot of credit to them they they did a really good job and and we had to really struggle to, to lock down one of their shooters and she did a really great job of exploiting our defense so um, overall I'm just extremely happy and proud for our kids because I felt like they earned it well I feel really good because we're undefeated in league right now but I feel like we could have done a little better but since we won today I think we did good well going against a rivalry rivalry team is always exciting because like you always want to destroy <laughs> And since our undefeated league champ was like on the line, we knew that we had to get work done. So we knew that we had to do everything right. And we practiced for this and we've been practicing since summer. So I knew we would get the job done. Well, I feel like today we played together all 12, even if all 12 didn't go in, they were still cheering for us on the bench and we were playing together as a team, which helped. I felt that we really played hard. Uh, Wes is a very good team. And, and you know, we, Played one of our better games tonight against Wes. This was a good, if there's a good loss, this is a good loss for us. It, it just taught the girls that they have to compete and now they know what they need to really do against better teams. And we told the girls afterwards that let's continue, let's play like this, let's practice, you know, like this during the spring. And so we said, don't start in September, let's start in February, getting ready for next year. I think my team worked really hard today. We put a lot of effort in this game. Um, I think it was a great way to end our season. But we really want to compete today, and we tried our best. I know, I think we played really good today, and we worked our hardest, so yeah. Like, we all played really well. We figured out how to like um, jive with each other, and we all played all in all a good game. The goal like I achieved this season was like being able to like better myself and my teammates, and they bettered me. And check out this cool boomerang the team posted on their Twitter page. It reads, undefeated. Very cool. Okay, coming up on the sports desk, soccer is what's up as those teams gear up for the playoffs as well. Stay tuned. Queen is just my everything. Right now, I wouldn't know where my life would be without her. They say chivalry's dead, it's not. Terrence is a gentleman, he opens doors. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. It takes me to a place of no hope. It takes me to a place of loneliness. It just, it saddens me. When you discriminate against somebody in housing, where do these people go? Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. <laughs> Humans have been gathering around fires, sharing stories for centuries. Uh -oh. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. Oh my gosh. Bear. Wait just bear. a minute. Is that the Smokey Bear? He scared us. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? 
precisely. The garden house defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, the true test. Feeling if the ashes are cool. It looks like they are. Bravo. Wait, do you mind if we could just... Ah, yes. The selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe. But not so much by Smokey Bear. Just one second, Smokey, quick. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. I'm Leslie Robbins. Like basketball, pairings for the CIF Southern Section Boys and Girls Soccer plus Girls Water Polo Playoffs were just released. All the action starts this week, so be sure to stay on top of the latest results on our social media pages. Soccer teams on both the boys and girls sides fought for their respective titles on the last day of the regular season, and there was a lot to fight for. Bishop Montgomery sealed the deal in Delray soccer, beating Bishop Amat 2-0, which made the Knights playoffs bound. As for the Pioneer League on the boys' side, West entered their final night in first place on 20 points. North and Torrance were tied for second with 19, and South was on 18 points. The Spartans stayed in contention with their 1-0 win over West. So let's get into it. On a rather chilly night last week, West visited Torrance, and after some intense footwork on the field, West won its second consecutive Pioneer title. Thanks to a late goal from Matt Ritchie, 1-0 never looked so good. Then South won their game against North, 2-1, putting them in second place. And to round it out, Torrance Boys Soccer had a 1-0 victory over North to clinch third place in the Pioneer League. Over on the girls' side, North and West were tied for first place with 24 points. First up, the North Saxon soccer squad tipped the visiting South Spartans by a final score of 3-2. And when West hosted Torrance, the Warriors won a thriller 2-1 in double overtime to grab a share of the league championship. Can we talk about El Camino College Sports? Their baseball team is on fire. The Warriors continued their hot start to the season as they are now 5-0. They defeated Antelope Valley College 6-1 midweek and then got the W again a couple days later versus San Diego Mesa 4-2. Then made it 5-0 when they toyed with the emotions of Moore Park College winning 12-4. And shout out to ECC's women's basketball squad. They had one solid week of play and are still undefeated in conference play. First, they dominated in all facets in a 75-27 win over LA Southwest, and then they grabbed the W at Long Beach, 62-56. Okay, coming up, we're taking you inside a Torrance Super Bowl watch party, and you know who our locals were rooting for. Stay tuned. You can't sit here. Don't add her to the chain. It was just a joke. We're not friends. Why are you talking to me? He started it. She's so gross. Lame. User. Weirdo. I've said and done things before that I'm not proud of. Just as I've been hurt by others. The thing is, this, this is not who I am. And it's definitely not who I want to be. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to spread gossip. I don't want to be a body shamer. I don't want to exclude anyone. I don't want to make anyone feel lonely. Left out. Hurt. We have the power to be more. We can create a kinder world. It's not that hard. We just need to stop. Take a moment and consider others before we speak. And before we act. Be more. Be more. Be more. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I 
don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to the Sports Desk. I'm Leslie Robbins. We here in Los Angeles County are still mourning the Super Bowl. The LA Rams may have lost, but watching them play in the Super Bowl was still a rush. We're filming this show a mere 24 hours after the big game, and let me tell you, I can still feel the energy. The Rams fans at Torrance Hotspot Red Car Brewery were super pumped about the game, and Danny and Cedric were there. Thanks, Leslie. We are down here at Red Car Brewery for the big game day. It's the Patriots versus the LA Rams, and we couldn't be more excited to be celebrating with Torrance, our Rams being in the 53rd Super Bowl. Super Bowl Sunday, and where else we want to be? But then right here in the city of Torrance, obviously we're sporting our navy blue, supporting those LA Rams, and we want to know what the city of Torrance thinks. But first, Danny, something smells good. What you got there? <laughs> Lori gave us this tray of her Sidewinder chili cheese fries. They actually just came up with this dish as a special. Super Bowl special and this is what all the fans are going to be grubbing on is steak fries with cheese and beer cheese melted all over it made right here in the brewery and of course topped with sour cream and green onions and we can't <laughs> wait to dig into that but first we want to dig into what you the city of Torrance thought about the big game versus the relative dynasty here the mainstay New England Patriots versus what we think will be a new dynasty in the LA Rams let's see what the city of Torrance thinks about the big game I've always been a Rams fan since time I've can, as long as I can remember. My dad was a big Rams fan, so I was too. And when they moved, I still followed the Rams. I still liked the team. And then when they moved back, uh, it was it was just fell right back into it. You know, the Rams had a better record during the course of the year and consistently have played well throughout the playoffs. So I think they got what it takes for for the game today. We're gonna win. Rams are gonna win. We haven't had a, a football team in L.A. for a long time, so the fact that they've made it in the two, Super Bowl after three years of arriving here is important. Secondly, we also have the Chargers, and the fact that they made it in the playoffs, I think, is pretty important as well because I think both teams, having we went from no teams to two teams, I think is pretty, pretty awesome. Go Rams! Kick some butt today! <laughs> Well, I think that we've worked so hard to get the teams back, especially the football teams, and I think that it's been really great to see everyone get behind it. You know, the Chargers and the Rams have done great this season, and I think it's important that we have ownership of a team. I mean, growing up in the Midwest, you always had a team, and it was just the way it was, and I feel like some people transplant out to California, and they bring their teams with them and stuff, so it's kind of fun to have a homegrown team here in L.A. Well, I think the Patriots have had their turn, and I feel like it's someone else's turn. And I feel like it's our turn here in L.A. I grew up a Rams fan, but they abandoned me when I was a child. Uh, and then they finally came back, so I'm, uh, I'm back with them. As soon as the Rams came back, it was just like... It feels good, and they're going to go all the way. We bring in the Super Bowl back to L.A. where it belongs. <laughs> but I used to go up to the Coliseum and see them play all the time. Yeah, I even got the blow up Rams hat. <laughs> See, defense is what wins the game. So they defense have to step up and Curly gonna have to do better. And I think he's gonna do that tonight. And that's what's finna end today, the dynasty. The oldest quarterback is not finna go out with the Super Bowl. No, it's not gonna happen. He's finna get his hat brought to him today. We got a new sheriff in town. No, the sheriff is still Tom Brady. Okay, Rams fans, there's always next year. As for today, that is going to do it for our show. Really looking forward to seeing you back here next week. In the meantime, be sure to stay in touch on social media, Twitter, Instagram. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. Tag us, find us on Facebook, send us an email, keep in touch, and take us behind your scenes. For everyone here at the Sports Desk, I'm Leslie Robbins. Thanks for watching.